Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to episode 30 of our Top 5 Fridays news videos. Uh, before we get started, hope everyone had a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, it was nice to relax for a day and eat some, eat some turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes and all that other good stuff. So hopefully you guys all enjoyed it as well. Hopefully more people are getting out on snow. Um, Stowe has opened here, which is really exciting. Um, so we're, we're getting out there as much as we can. Uh, not like ideal conditions so far, um, but the mountain's hanging in there and, and they're, they're doing just fine. Um, and yeah, it's just exciting to be sliding on snow. Um, we are continuing our Black Friday sale, so keep an eye out for that if you're looking for new gear. Uh, some people last week were asking where Bob was. Um, Bob was on father duties last week, and today he's actually pretty much like right below me right now, um, helping to ship holiday orders. Uh, Bob actually used to be our shipping manager before moving into his current role, so he's a valuable person to jump back into shipping. So no Bob this week, hopefully we'll have him back next week. Um, but yeah, that all said, let's just get straight into the news. Um, first up, we have a World Cup recap. Uh, we talked about this quite a bit last Friday, about the upcoming races in Levy. Now they're the, the previous races in Levy. Uh, Petra Vlova, back-to-back um, -back winner, Saturday and Sunday. Really, really good skiing from Petra. It was really fun watching her ski. Um, I also saw some interesting stuff, um, some comments about the ski length that she was on and, and discuss discussion over how she's on a longer length slalom ski than a lot of the women's field, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, Michaela Schiffrin skied really well. You know, I think considering it had been 300 days since her last World Cup ski race, um, pretty darn good showing. She was second on Saturday and fifth on Sunday. She was only 18, 18 one hundredth of a second back on Saturday. Um, and I didn't get to see the whole race, but I did see... Uh, Michaela's runs and Petra's runs um, and and actually a lot of others as well uh, but yeah I, in my opinion Michaela was skiing really really well um, and I don't think it'll be long until she's standing on the top step of that podium um, which is pretty cool. Um, Petra actually picked up another win yesterday in a parallel slalom race uh, and Paula, Paula Moltzen from the United States actually picked up a second place finish in that which is awesome um, and then the men are racing today they're probably racing like right now. I can't remember the time, uh, but the men are racing today. Um, so really exciting to get some some good ski racing. Uh, I think that those slalom races in Levy were were just really entertaining. You know, I, the 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 night races are always really fun to watch too. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, you can find recaps of the race. You can see highlights of Michaela's and and Petra's runs if you just want to check those out. Um, but yeah, World Cup slalom racing is back, and it was a good one. Um, next up, we have some COVID updates in Colorado. We talked about this a while back, probably close to a month ago at this point. Um, but the state had put out some guidelines for basically quarantining out of town or out of state guests who contract COVID while they're on their trip. And we're kind of saying like, you need to have a, a quarantine place for these people to go. So like you need to block off a section of your lodging, which definitely was, was a challenge for ski resorts. Um, and the report that we're getting now is that local lodging establishments, you know, outside of the resort have kind of stepped up and made it known that they'll provide additional quarantine space should the resorts need it. Um, so I think that's really cool. You know, I always think it's cool when a community comes together and helps each other, each other out. And I think this is a really good example of that. Uh, and it provides, you know, a nice level of reassurance to those mountains in the case that something does happen and they have to keep a, a large amount of people safe. Um, they, they have a way to do so now, um, or at least a, a slightly less stressful situation with these, with these other lodging establishments stepping up. Um, now, also some additional news out of Colorado. Summit County has raised their COVID levels to red, uh, which is never good. Red's usually a bad sign, uh, but they went up from orange to red, which brings along more, more policies 
Um, and the biggest one is just more restrictions on guest capacity. So they will be operating at a lower percentage. Um, and as of putting today's news together, we didn't know what that specific increase or decrease in percentage was or is. Um, so still a little bit of a gray area, a little bit vague, uh, but yeah, there will be like a, a lower percentage of skiers allowed on the mountain still based on available terrain. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll keep our eyes on this closely. Um, if you're out in Colorado, let us know. Maybe you're trying to book a reservation and you're not able to. Maybe you're trying to book some reservations and you're having no problem whatsoever. Um, we love hearing from you guys and, and love getting getting your experience. So let us know if you're out there and, and if things feel like they're changing for you or if they're more or less staying the same. Um, third topic of the week, and thankfully that was kind of our only COVID topic or only serious, uh, and all right, I guess four is technically COVID topic too, but it's a little bit more fun, I suppose. Um, but this third topic is really exciting. Um, two University of Utah PhD graduates, they both studied in atmospheric science um, they have a new concept for a snow gun that would produce powder instead of like what we know as man-made snow. Um, really, really interesting. I definitely encourage you to, to read through this if you're into this kind of, uh, if you're into atmospheric science and, and snow making, um, it's really cool. You know, we've had some pretty significant advancements in snow making in the past 10 years, I'd say where the quality of the snow is, is definitely a lot better, a lot drier in most situations. Um, in this situation, Peter Veals and Trey Alvey, they you know, started by looking at microscopic images of snow. Uh, Man-made snow is basically like a bunch of round pellets, if you're looking at it under a microscope, that are kind of just like smushed together or frozen together. And yeah, we all know man or natural snow is snowflakes, uh, like the, the traditional snowflakes, like you cut out of paper when you were a kid and that kind of stuff. Now, these guys kind of studied that and, and you know, I, without, no, I don't know how they do it because I'm not an atmospheric scientist, um, but they basically have created a tabletop prototype version of a snowmaker that would put out snow that's closer to natural snow, which, you know, I think it would be Obviously, it would be sweet if we could just turn on snowmaking guns and then the next day is a powder day instead of a day of like man-made snowmaking rollers or something like that. Um, next step for them is to create a full-size version of it. And you can actually help by going to the Quantum Snow Kickstarter page. They're looking to raise uh, about $8,000 out of the twelve to 14000 that they'll need to create a full-scale prototype. But... How cool would that be if in you know a few years we have some snowmaking guns out on resorts that are putting out snow that feels more like powder? Um, I think that would just be unbelievable. Um, and it's really, really cool to see that development. Um, and then the fourth topic of the week, uh, this is an article that was put out by the New York Times. Um, ski patrollers have been forced to shave their facial hair in a lot of situations in order to work properly with an N95 mask. Um, and this is kind of, you know, this article is approaching it from the, the angle that like, this is a very traditional thing for ski patrollers to have. Um, I suppose specifically male ski patrollers is to have like big bushy kind of mountain man beards. Uh, but unfortunately beards like that don't work with N95 masks or kind of like they reduce the effectiveness of those masks rather. Um, and patrollers this season are required to wear N95 masks in basically any rescue scenario. Um, so the pretty much every ski resort across the country, as far as I know, or most um, have asked their ski patrollers to be either clean shaven or comply to one of 40 approved facial hairstyles from the CDC which is a sentence that I certainly never thought I would have the opportunity to say uh, and the idea that there are approved facial hair styles from the CDC, I suppose is somewhat amusing if it wasn't for the fact that it's because of COVID. So that kind of takes some of the fun factor out of it. 
Um, but yeah, really good article from New York Times. Definitely encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, and, and thank you, big, big thank you. Big thank you, big round of applause, whatever you want to say. Uh, but yeah, lots of gratitude towards anybody that's a patroller out there. I have been uh, sledded, carted, whatever you want, off the mountain a few times. Um, and I really, really, really value ski patrollers and what they do to keep everyone safe. So thank you, and I'm really sorry that you have to shave your beards. Um, finally, we have our edits of the week. Uh, pretty light week for edits, but there are some really good ones in here too. First, we have uh, an edit called Hum from Taylor Lundquist. I think it's supposed to be called Hum. If it was supposed to be H-U-M, my apologies. Uh, but really good, pretty short. It's like in between two and three minutes. Um, Taylor Lundquist is really, really good skier. Um, skis for line, pretty sure. Uh, and yeah, she's just got, she's got a really good kind of modern style in the park. A lot of like shifties and presses and taps and stuff like that. Um, so check that out if you're into that kind of skiing. Next we have from Rosignol, um, this part of their kind of ride free series to celebrate the new Black Ops line. Uh, they have a short film called Out of Minds, which is not really that short. It's like 20 minutes long. Um, really, really well done. It's kind of video game style, which brings me back to a few videos that I can't even remember what they are. But it, there have historically been some, some ski films that kind of go about it from this video game style. And I always think that's a really clever way of doing it. A uh, wide range of skiing in here, too. Um, there's even some ski flying. Ski flying is crazy now. I didn't, I guess I did, but I didn't realize the extent to which people were taking off and then like flying to a patch of snow that you couldn't otherwise get to and then like making a couple turns on that and then flying away. So I was fascinated by that. Um, and then finally, the third edit of the week is called Balance. Balance, sorry. Um, <clears throat> bunch of different people in this, notably Sage Catabriga Alosa and Ingrid Backstrom also both make appearances, excuse me, um, and the idea of this edit is it's about the balance between mountain biking and skiing, uh, which kind of hits home for me and probably anybody that enjoys those activities. Um, a lot of that happens here in Stowe. We have a really robust mountain biking community in the summer and that community pretty much transitions seamlessly into a robust <clears throat> excuse me ski and snowboard community in the winter um, so yeah kind of just celebrating the balance between those two sports uh, i'll throw another one in there if you're a whitewater kayaker you get like extra balance in your life because as the snow melts then the rivers go up and then the rivers dry and then biking's good so piece of advice if you're looking to add a tertiary sport to your balance. Um, and with that, we'll end. Uh, thanks for joining me. As always, like I said, we'll try and get Bob back in here next week. Um, we do have some increased COVID safety procedures at in Ski Essentials right now. Um, just really trying to keep our staff as safe as possible. So there's a chance that he might not be sitting next to, next to me here physically, um, but even if he can't, I'll get him in here digitally and we'll put his face up there, something like that. Um, so yeah, hopefully everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully you're all safe and healthy, happy and healthy. Healthy? Help, I'm pretty sure I just tried to say healthy. Uh, but yeah, hope you're healthy and happy and, and we'll talk to you guys next week.